we can really study in just so many different ways. Uh, let's talk about plucking hand first. So really all you're doing with your plucking hand is you're just plucking one string. And then you move it. That's all you're doing. So um, to start out, pick a really strong right hand combination for you, such as maybe like I and M and you can work the line that way for for speed for strength uh, to get it sounding the way that you want and you can do uh, either free stroke which is what that was or you can do rest stroke as well uh, and so that was I am um, pick a strong fingering and then pick like a, a really weak fingering for you, uh, one that you don't do as easily. Uh, so for me, it's definitely going to be M and A. Playing through a line like this, you know, once a day, twice a day, maybe uh, at a slow tempo, but making sure everything is clear, um, it can get you some really good work in on your fingerings that are not so great, um, and it can kind of help you um, get through the process okay um, maybe it's a little bit easier on your ears than scales or even just you know practicing alternation on an open string by itself which is good to do but if you play this line uh, perhaps it makes it just a little bit more interesting for you so uh, I'm gonna do M and A and go kind of slow and just work that combination. And etc. You could play through the line once or twice, you know, whatever, um, and do that a little bit every day, and then you'll have worked that combination that's not so great in your hand. So, uh, of course, any two-finger combination would be good to work. Remember, we have rest stroke or free stroke that you can do. You can do IM, IA, MA. Um, if you want to work your pinky, which I would suggest, you can do pinky too. Why not? Once again, you're kind of disguising some of the workload, hopefully. If you really like how this line sounds. I mean, why not? It's good to work your pinky. Don't forget about it. Uh, of course, also thumb. So you can do thumb alternating with any of these fingers. Let's try, how about P and A, right? That's interesting. through this line playing it from beginning to end uh, with a chosen fingering uh, kind of gives you the feeling of a good repetition or a good um, study and if you can if you want to do it again or you want to do it ten times or you want to do it one time that's fine uh, but it's a good chunk for your brain to work with um, if I'm going to do a brief uh, overview of some technique Maybe I'll do it once, maybe I'll do it two or three times. If I want to really study it, study a lot of techniques, play it 10, 20, 30 times, right? Um, just whatever you need that day. So uh, all two finger combinations are good. Uh, now let's look at a few others. Uh, I think 
the one I used at the beginning of the video was a three finger combination, A, M, I, free stroke. And this is a really beneficial technique for me to work on because it's working on um, every finger sounding loud enough and sounding clear enough and sounding, you know, the same. Not the same for the sake of being the same, but the same for, you know, for strength and accuracy and power. In other words, it's not like a weak finger sticks out because it sounds different. Um, so just practicing this in a continuous se sequence of A, M, I, 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 and kind of fighting that natural group of three and not wanting it to sound like that, but want wanting it to sound you know, like it does on the recording. It's really good for technical study. Um, and then each time you have a fretted note, uh, especially on a fingering like that, I like to try and give it a little bit of an accent. Just a little bit. And it also helps this because, um, you know, the accents will not fall in the same place. Um, so if you're feeling that line, you're feeling the evenness, you're feeling the accents, you feel the sounds being, um, all the sounds being strong, then you work a very good mechanism in your, in your plucking hand. Also, uh, for you guys out there that play guitar tremolo, right? This technique where you go P A M I, P A M I. This would be another good combination to practice something like this. Again, shooting for evenness, um, you know, similar sounds, all sounds being strong. I do a ridiculous amount of tremolo study and practice. Uh, I have to. Uh, so uh, this is something again you could do. You know, very diligent study, and you know you have to do that, right? But also sprinkle in some lines that you can get into a little bit more. And while you're working on the same things. And you're plucking in. Uh, I think it's good to sprinkle in these types of lines for you know things like tremolo practice. Uh, okay, I think that's all the main plucking hand things I can think about. Now let's shift the focus over to fingerboard hand. So when you start to learn this line with some speed, it already presents some challenge. Uh, well, two different ways. The first way is, how do you want to finger this passage? I finger it with like the the box pattern, I guess, where you make a four finger box over four frets and just try to move that as little as possible. could do a different fingering what really whatever feels comfortable to you maybe something like this one two four two for that um this stretch here not really stretch but this span and uh you want to have a plan and your plan needs to help your fingers right after they fret relax like really fast because when you start to build speed in your plucking hand okay if you're not relaxing just as fast here then it's gonna sound really messy instead of getting these nice open strings in between you're gonna get some weird you know 
uh, muted notes. So it's definitely an exercise in that. Uh, right after you fret a note, you, you relax. And then, you know, you come up with a fingering scheme, which you need to decide. If you want to try some different things, that's, um, that's cool. Uh, but then if you're going to do a repetition, know what you've decided. Uh, and know what your best fingering is for you. So those two ways is very helpful. Okay, now looking beyond that, we can study uh, each individual finger if we want, okay? Now if I had to play this in front of somebody, uh, I'm gonna use a comfortable fingering. Let's say uh, I wanna study my fourth finger and I wanna work its strength and accuracy. Okay, close. <laughs> but uh, it would be a good exercise. studying each individual finger. Okay, now let's go to third finger. Etc. Any finger, really. And when I do this, uh, as much as I'm studying a finger, I'm studying this. It's like this is this has got to happen all, all the time. This isn't like a stretch. Um, it's finger facility. But finger facility within the arm uh, as natural as it can be. So um, it's probably something to keep in mind. If I'm going to study fourth finger, okay, sure. But I'm also studying how it works with the arm, how I can actually use the arm to make the fourth finger feel stronger and better. So those two things go together. So you can pick any finger. Oh, this is also kind of interesting. Pick two fingers, right? Um, so let's say two and three, okay? And just alternate between them. It's kind of weird. Oops. It'll test your coordination. strict alternation I think a double thumb uh, that's kind of a fun exercise or you could do like three fingers if you want and then I think the last way I can think of right now is descending slurs you can turn this whole thing into a descending slur exercise changing the line just ever so slightly instead of plucking every note I'm plucking the open strings when I have a note I fret it and then instead of plucking the open string after it I just do a descending slur Let's put those last two concepts together. Let's do slurs, and then let's say my first finger slurs are real bad. I want to work on those. Well, whatever. Um, and so you can combine these things and, and make a regimen for yourself. You could play this line, you know, five or ten times. Choose the fingerings that uh, you really need to work on. 
or you know ones uh, that work towards goals that you have um, and make a regimen just by only playing this line in a bunch of different ways so those are just some of the ways um, you can keep thinking of ways to play a line like this as long as you keep keep trying to really the last thing I want to mention about it is if I'm going to study a line like this, I'm always going to move it across all strings, okay? I know the music doesn't go this way in, in, in the piece, uh, but I'm going to move it down to the bass strings. Sometimes I play it where I just start on the sixth string and move up to the fifth, fourth, third, second, first, just so I can play it across all six strings. Okay, for me, this is super important. Um, everyone who plays, well, you know, we'll say classical guitar, they have their own systems for uh, how, they, how they're going to deal with the bass strings. Uh, what, what I mean by that is um, your nails can get in the way of what you want to do on the bass strings. They can give you noise that you don't want, like a, a kind of a sweepy thing. And a lot of times, you can do the same stroke on a treble string, and it sounds great. When you get down to the bass, you get a big nasty noise. So some people, uh, you know, they just really police these bass strings with their thumb, and they don't do things to where... Um, they're going to need to use the fingers a whole lot on the bass strings, okay? Um, for my playing, I've got to be able to use my fingers on the bass strings. Like, getting as good a sound as I can get. If it's not 100%, you know, perfectly clean, I can probably live with it. But anything that I do on the travels... be able to also do on the bass strings or I don't think I can do it so it's really important to move a line like this to the bass strings and deal with things like you know the string is thicker uh, it's gonna be maybe a little bit more difficult at first uh, to, to play a line like this you know at the same speed or at the same efficiency that you do on the trebles uh, also if you uh, play with fingernails like I do, um, finding, doing this can really help you improve your nail shape. If you have a nail shape that you think works great, but after you play a line like this on the bass strings, with so many strokes, play that line on the bass strings and then you look at your nails and you're like, wow, they're really torn up. Um, then uh, I don't think it, that's probably not a very good nail shape if you want to do this. Uh, or it may be a good nail shape, but uh, you can improve it. So finding a nail shape where you can play this exercise across all six strings and it doesn't tear up, tear up your nails, it doesn't get in the way of your sound. You don't have a nice sound here. <laughs> and then a weird sound when you get to the bass strings. Uh, it can really help your technique that way. Because when you're playing a line and you're gonna cross strings, I mean, who cares that you're crossing strings? Nobody cares, nor should they. The, the music doesn't care, it just wants to be music. So then you can just play lines. Uh, yeah, it's going to sound a little different across each string. But um, you've shaped your technique uh, by knowing you can do you know, an exercise like this on any string. Uh, and then uh, if you have that in your technique and you go to play a line, you can just play the line. Uh, you don't have to worry about is it going to be scratchy. Um, it, you don't have to worry about is it going to tear up my nails. You don't want to worry about that. Um, I don't think so. 
Um, you just want the comfort of saying, I'm going to play this line the best I can play it, and, and, and that's how it's going to be. So um, that's kind of putting putting all these things together, okay? You want to work uh, kind of basic movements here, basic movements here. Okay, that's very important. Very important for players on any level, okay? Uh, and then put these together conceptually. Think musically and say, uh, if I move this line around, what gets in my way? How can I fix it? Uh, it's thinking about technique in a different way. Uh, it's mu musically driven technique, isn't it? Um, and then you can improve it that way so that you can say, I'm going to play this line wherever I want to play it. Exactly what I want to do with it. Mm -hmm.